I'm Urvi Shah, a hematologist and oncologist on the myeloma service at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. And this is our poster at the International Myeloma Workshop. I'll take you through the poster, but the topic is increased intake of healthier plant and seafood proteins is linked to higher stool butrate levels and sustained minimal residual disease negativity in multiple myeloma. So this is basically looking at dietary patterns and the microbiome and outcomes in myeloma in patients on lenalidomide maintenance. What, what we know so far and what you might have already heard about is that there is limited data on the microbiome in myeloma, and we know that certain bacteria are associated with better outcomes and minimal residual disease negativity. Some of those bacteria, as you can see here, are eubacterium and fecalibacterium from a study from our institute. These bacteria were associated with higher incidence of MRD negativity compared to uh, if, if these bacteria were present in patients. Similarly, presence of eubacterium was also associated with increased post-transplant survival and also associated with less graft-versus-host disease in patients who had an allogeneic transplant. All of this points towards there being certain bacteria that are uh, healthy or helpful for um, myeloma, but how does a patient use that data to interpret it in terms of making any changes? So we decided to look at diet because diet is one of the strongest factors that modulate the microbiome. What you can see here is that we looked at patients on the lenalidomide maintenance study. Patients were getting 10 milligrams of lenalidomide for five years. On this study, we collected food frequency questionnaires. These are dietary surveys looking at patients' dietary patterns over the last year. So this just gives a general idea of what patients eat. And then we also looked, we collected stool samples and we assessed MRD in the bone marrow. So looking for no evidence of myeloma in the bone marrow. What we then did is with the stool samples, we uh, looked at diversity. So diversity is uh, looking at how many types of different microbes are there in the stool. If a patient has more diversity or more variety, like if you think about a forest and there are many different animals or birds in that, like there is good diversity in the forest, we want the same thing in the microbiome. And what has been shown even in prior studies is that higher diversity is associated with better outcomes and MRD negativity. So so we, we looked at that as well, and what you see here is that the higher diversity levels are associated with MRD negativity, and the lower diversity are associated more likely with MRD positivity. The next thing we looked at is the type of bacteria that might be associated with MRD negativity. Like I'd already told you previously that there are certain bacteria, but knowing individual bacteria names is hard to you know, draw any conclusions in terms of what you can do to modulate this. So we looked at groups of bacteria and looked mainly at the butrate producing bacteria because we know that this is a, mod a molecule that has anti-cancer and anti-inflammatory properties. So what we looked at is the, num the relative abundance of butrate producers in the stool and looked whether patients who had a higher level were more likely to be MRD negative. And what you see is that patients who had higher levels of the butrate producers were more likely to be MRD negative than those who had lower uh, abundance of these butrate producers. Similarly, we looked at the stool metabolite. So these butrate producers actually make the butrate, which is a stool metabolite. And that metabolite is, is known to have immune modulating properties, anti-cancer and anti-inflammatory properties. So what you see here is that higher stool butrate levels are associated with MRD negativity again. Now that we know that butrate levels are associated with MRD negativity, we wanted to look at the dietary associations and see is there something in the diet that could modulate the butrate levels and thus outcomes. And so we looked at the food frequency questionnaire and calculated something called the healthy eating index. This is a component that higher the score, the healthier the diet. And so we calculated the score for every patient and then looked at associations with different components in the healthy eating score to see if that was associated with butrate levels. What you do see is that higher total protein and plant and seafood protein is associated with higher butrate levels. 
what that goes to show and when we talk about total protein it's also healthier proteins and the way the score calculates healthier proteins is more plant forward and seafood forward proteins not the the red meat and things like that and so what it does show is that the the higher uh, healthier proteins are associated with higher butyrate levels we also looked at dietary flavonoids flavonoids are basically plant chemicals found in food so flavonoids would only be found in plant foods and we looked at whether these flav these dietary flavonoids are associated with butyrate levels and sure enough we see a strong association with that as well in in um, non myeloma populations we it is known that butyrate is associated with plant forward diets so higher plant forward diets people have higher butyrate levels in their stool but this is the first time we're showing it in multiple myeloma and plasma cell disorders so just to summarize what we've shown so far is that high plant forward diets imp implying high fiber diets are, are associated and with increased butyrate producers and increased butyrate levels these increased butyrate levels as i mentioned pr previously have anti cancer and anti inflammatory properties and th these are the different mechanisms by inhibiting um, histone deacetylases and the nuclear factor kappa b pathway and also reducing inflammation so we we suspect that this is the mechanism by which the butyrate is linked to uh, increased mrd negativity so this basically uh, shows us a method by which we could potentially modulate the butyrate levels in the stool and then also uh, outcomes for patients in the long term uh, given these findings we are currently uh, doing an interventional trial uh, with a whole food plant based diet in patients with precursor disorders so with mgus and smoldering myeloma who have a bmi over 25 and we're doing this because we want to see um, the effect of lenalidomide or of any therapies but eventually we will look at it even in patients on therapy